So it is August in the summertime and it is hot out. What cools you off on a sunny day like this? I look for a nice cold, tall glass of water filled to the brim with ice to take the summer heat away. Water though serves a much more important role than just keeping us cool and hydrated. Everyone and everything in the world needs water to survive. And nearly everywhere you look, from great rivers in the rainforest to just creeks crossing your own backyard, water makes up a significant aspect of life. And this goes for ourselves, our history, our environment, and especially for your state parks. Hey, my name is Patrick and I work for the Delaware State Parks. And we are so excited to be a part of your summer camp, Camp We Belong, this year. We've teamed up with our friends over at the Nemours Estate to bring some of the amazing things the state parks have to offer right to you. Today, we're going to take you around Delaware and into some of our coolest state parks to show you just how helpful water is to the community and the world around you. Along the way, we're going to talk to experts at each park who will teach us a little bit more about the roles water plays in, in their parks. We'll do some fun activities and even meet some interesting animals. And at the end of the day, we'll be live in studio to talk to everyone about the parks, our histories and our environments, as we invite you to take a closer look into your own amazing backyards. So hey everyone, we are right here in Wilmington, Delaware, just around the corner from the Moores Estate and Hospital. So right here in your own backyard. We're here with Nathan, a park naturalist and an all around nature expert. I wouldn't say expert Patrick, but I know a thing or two. Hey guys, my name is Nathan. I'm the lead naturalist for Alpocus Run and Wilmington State Parks. Nathan, for those of us out here who aren't familiar with this area, can you tell us a little bit about your parks? Yeah, for sure. So we have two main bodies of water in our parks, Alapocos Run, which is right behind me, and the Brandywine River, which is right in front of us. Uh, they're two both very important resources to both the wildlife and the people that live in this area. Okay. So you said the Brandywine runs right through this park. I don't really know much about the river. Can you tell us, is it important to this area? Oh, absolutely, yeah. This river's flowing waters forever changed the course of history for the city of Wilmington. And you might be wondering how, so let's find out. To better understand this, we need some background info. So where are we on the map? Yeah, you might already know where we are on the map, but I want you to look at another map that tells a different story. You're probably noticing that the city of Wilmington lands right along that yellow curve. Can anyone guess what this map is measuring? Does this tell like how much rainfall we get? You're close, but not quite. This is actually a topographical map, meaning it shows which areas have hills and mountains and which areas are flat. The map tells us that we are right at the point where flatland meets hills. You're looking at something called the fall line. So what is this fall line? So a fall line is where the Piedmont, the yellow and red areas, meet the Atlantic coastal plain, the green areas. The name fall line comes from the river rapids and falls that occur as the water flows from the hard rocks of the higher Piedmont to the softer rocks of the coastal plain. You can see this right behind me as well. This fall line is critical in the history of Wilmington. Why do you think the fall line makes a difference? Is it because the Brandywine River flows down through this fall line? Yeah, exactly. So due to the river's location, flowing down this elevation decrease, Wilmington has a great source of flowing water. Because of this, mills were set up right at the fall line where they could get the most power from the water of the river. Farmers would load up their wagons and bring their wheat to the mill, sell it to the miller, and then the mills would grind that into very fine flour. The millers would sell the wheat for a profit. And eventually, they would ship it out to the rest of the world and this area of Delaware became very well known for the quality of its mills and flour. The other reason Wilmington came to be here is that ships can't really navigate water like this. Because of the rocks of the Piedmont, this all in turn made it a great place to settle right here. All along the East Coast, all of the major cities grew up right around the fall line. Wilmington started at Market Street because of this as well. So how does somebody take moving water and somehow use it to power machinery? Like what does this moving water have that's valuable to us? Yeah, for sure. So you might find the answer to your question if you look in front of us at the river. So what differences do you notice between the water on the right before falling and after it falls on the left? What you're seeing are two different types of energy. On the right, where the water is calmer, we have potential energy. Potential energy is stored in an object. Think of a rubber band. If you stretch it, you'll get potential energy. After the rubber band is released, potential energy is converted into motion. So what do we call that motion? That would be kinetic energy, the water on the left. Think of it flying through the air, the rubber band. 
When you see water falling like this, you're seeing potential energy turn to kinetic energy right before your very eyes. Okay, so when a rubber band is pulled back, it's creating potential energy. And when I let it go, it's now turned into kinetic energy, which makes it fly through the air instead of just fall into the ground. But I can pull a rubber band back really far and make it go even farther. Does something like this work with water as well? Yeah, that's actually a great question. So let's try something out for ourselves to test that. I have two water balloons here. They have the same amount of water in them, but I'm gonna drop them from different heights. Now, which one do you think will create the bigger splash zone? So the higher up water can fall, the more potential energy it has stored. So just like the rubber band, water can be controlled and changed to create more kinetic energy. So in the past, Wilmington's mills used water wheels to power their machinery to perform many tasks, grind grain, make textiles, saw lumber, or even make paper. In order to make those wheels really spin, they needed to have a lot of energy working for them. They saw this fall line and the Piedmont and all of the potential energy stored here, and they put it to good use. Wow, I never knew that one river had the potential to define so much of a city's history. So you've talked a lot about how people have used this river to help build and shape the city around us. But what about the wildlife? Are there any interest in natural aspects of this river? Absolutely. So you can find a really interesting array of wildlife here. The river supports a large amount of fish with species from trout and bass to catfish and shad. This in turn brings a lot of birds who hunt for these fish. Uh, my favorite is if you come here at night or early morning, you can find the black crowned night heron. That's my favorite bird that you can find at the park. That's a cool sounding bird. What makes it your favorite? So they're really interesting because they're the most widespread heron in the world. Uh, they don't differentiate between their young. So you could drop a young black crowned heron into the nest of one and it'll just think it's its own kid, even if it's not. And the <laughs> oldest known black crowned heron is actually 21 years old. It was a female that was documented. It's a pretty cool bird. What an interesting bird. That's pretty sweet, but I still gotta say, I think my favorite animal has gotta be a sea turtle. So I have to ask, are there any types of turtles found here in the park? Yeah, there are. Uh, most of Delaware's native turtle species can be found in the park, and we're particularly used to seeing bok turtles out and about. So this species is interesting for a few reasons. For one, their shells can regenerate and reform if damaged. That's because they contain keratin, the same kind of material that's in our hair and nails. The coolest part about box turtles though, is how old they can grow. They can live to be over 100 years old. So the next time you see one out in the wild, just imagine how different the world was when it was born. And Eastern box turtles are actually considered vulnerable species. So it's important that we continue to protect their habitat into the future. That's a really great point to bring up. So what is something that we could all do to kind of help out these little guys? Absolutely. So with any kind of vulnerable environment like a water habitat, you want to make sure that you don't dump food or trash or any kind of other liquid in there. As you see it, it should be. We should enjoy it from a distance and just let it exist as it is. So for those of you at Nemours, what do you see outside of your window every day? The wildlife you observe is very close to our park. So there's a high chance that you're seeing some of these things already. So who would have known that right here next to Nemours is such an important river and a park that can tell so much cool stuff about how water is important to our community. However, we're only at the very top of the state. So there has to be a lot of other important bodies of water around us. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So even though the Brandywine is a really interesting resource in itself, there are a lot of really cool ponds in Delaware that you can find further south in the state. Sweet, let's go find one. Mm -hmm.